Hello everyone, my name is Bradley. I have a Brad Taste in Music. Now, keep in mind what you're about to hear on this video is uh, stuff that I handpicked specifically uh, choosing the worst possible sounding clips from these albums. It's pretty skewed against the artists that I'm going to be talking about, uh, so don't take it entirely at face value and uh, feel free to make your own opinion about all this crap. Number 20. I could write a record full of radio songs. Oh God! Yeah. Sounds like a nightmare if you ask me. I pray someday you find yourself. NF with hope. NF has always been about taking these large cinematic beats that sound like Marvel trailers and rapping fast over them, usually about something very emotional. But on Hope, he split between making two specific kinds of songs. He makes cocky and annoying songs about how he's better than everybody else because he's not like them, uh, and he makes some deep personal spiritual journey style songs on here as well. Um, both of these, of course, soundtracked with Marvel-type beats, as per usual. There were a couple of compelling moments on this album, uh, for sure, but for the most part I found this to be incredibly tacky and some of the most unlikable stuff that I've heard NF drop, period. Ken Carson, number 19, he's back, and this time uh, with more hype than ever behind this new album, A Great Chaos. And if you couldn't tell by the clips, uh, he makes incoherent and bizarre Dirty Rage bangers that many people love the hell out of this year. However, to my ears, it sounds like absolute garbage. Uh, for the most part, actually, there were a couple of songs on this album uh, that I, I actually thought were okay, and I understood the vision for. Um, which songs exactly? Uh, well, I'm not telling you. Uh, good luck finding out and guessing through the slop this album provides you. Have you something that I can borrow? Cause I've been so low. Believe me, lonely. So stay for a while. Number 18, Louis Capaldi broken by desire to be he heavenly. Louis Capaldi returns with another boring and polished pointless piano project. I don't know why I wrote this down with a bunch of P's in it. The P's always come out really horrible through the, the mic. Anyways, really boring. Hardly even feels like a human being wrote this uh, at all. Um, but of course, worst offense is the vocals are just as awful as you would imagine they are for a new Louis Capaldi album. Uh, album? Album, which uh, of course his vocals are the main focus of these albums. Uh, with just a little bit of piano in the back. Number 17, Sexy Red, Hood's Hottest Princess. Wow. Um, I listened to this with a friend, and, uh, you know, d despite the fact that it's so raunchy, I, I feel like I was just mostly bored listening to this. With occasionally going, huh? What? Uh, to to a, a kind of a weird line here or there. Uh, the biggest problem for me is I just don't think Sexy Red really has the ability to show a lot of emotion through her voice. It's very raspy. And I think it's the main thing that keeps me uninterested in her music. And again, the, the vulgarity, it, it gets tiring pretty fast. Um, it, it is very insane, though, uh, like, at certain points, um, but, but I, I just, I don't know, man, M maybe I'm too old for this shit, maybe it's just not for me, but I really, I get nothing out of this. It's my Number 16, Koi Ray with Koi. Not every song on this album is horrible, uh, just most of them. The bad songs use samples to try to create a popular TikTok smasher, but in the process end up actually creating the most egregious crap you'll hear in your entire life. It is such a tough album to sit through. Eh, but there are a couple hits. I am to turn my mind off, but I don't know where to go when the night's long. I like you, but I need some space. I like you kind of far away I like you but I need some room 
Water Parks, Intellectual Property number 15. I was shown this album by a group of friends who were very eager to have me give it a fair shot. Um, they were extremely excited about this and they were really hoping I would like it. I feel like they kind of knew I wasn't going to like it, but also at the same time, there was so much information behind it. They, they came to me with this album and pretty much provided as much context as possible for every single song, letting me know the ins and outs of the lore and understanding the meanings of these tracks. And I was, I was able to figure out uh, what each of these songs meant and why it made the choices that it made. However, you got one part of that wrong. I think highly of Hawaii. I got a cheap flight and a plan. That hilltop of beasts. When I Number 14, Owl City Coco Moon. Wow, this album really sucks. Like, yeah, uh, the fact that it isn't in the top 10 actually is just because it's so ignorant on how bad it is. It's actually kind of charming. Um, take, for example, the song Vitamin C, which is possibly the most uncomfortable and shitty song I've ever heard from this guy. Um, it's not really much better than the rest of the album, but it, it definitely the, the talks of vacationing to Hawaii whenever he feels bad is certainly a, a bit of a head scratcher. And, uh, yeah, the rest of this album isn't great. Uh, yeah, it's, it's shit. Something you do, the taste of the divine, you will never receive in return. Sleep Token gained a bunch of hype this year through very viral, cryptic songs that were released uh, that kind of went around on TikTok, I believe. Um, and I'll never forget when each of these songs came out. Um, because I was sent them endlessly on my streams by so many different people. And every single time, I would give it 110%. I'd be like, okay, fine. It's it's a, These songs were long, all right? It was very generous, the donation. So I sat there and I listened. And every single time I would hear the same song, I would hear the same problem. Um, this album combines metal and pop music together like water and oil. It feels like they didn't even try to make a smooth experience at all, instead just opting for horrible instrumental blends and corny-ass vocals uh, for the entirety of this, uh, this, uh, this long fucking album. At least maybe it feels longer than I remember, I don't know. Uh, I've, I've had to try to erase this thing from my mind because the album's actually so catchy, uh, which would be a good thing usually. Um, but having these songs ring in my brain all year uh, just kind of felt frustrating, and it's not really something I felt that great about. Yeah, it's it's, it's personal. Put that smoke in my weed, bitch. Code Dubs, finesse the world. It's frat bro step in 2023. It sounds insanely bad. The drops are horrible. The claps are terrible. No. Number 11, 6 9 uh, Leyenda Viva. Uh, 6 9 got his ass beat at the gym so hard this year he decided to quit rapping altogether on uh, Leyenda Viva. Instead, we are given some of the most dime a dozen reggaeton uh, with 6 9 trying to make you sympathize with him. Uh, and it's really, really funny in concept. In execution, it's actually just extremely bo bleh, boring. Number 10, Roger Waters, Dark Side of the Moon, Redux. Wow, what a horrible experience. Uh, this makes Louis Capaldi sound like Speedcore in comparison. Um, what an absolute drag as Roger Waters butchers the Dark Side of the Moon through sleep-inducing narration. Uh, it is an absolute snoozer. And it's made worse by the fact that it is uh, labeled as a Redux, uh, which is so many degrees worse than the original album. Uh, that it actually makes it the original feel worse by association, having this thing exist. So, 
A very destructive album for sure. Number nine, Mori Calliope, Jigoku 6. Mori brings a wide arrangement of ambition and variety on Jigoku 6, um, but there's something wrong. This is so unbelievably dramatic and self-pitying, which would be fine um, if the songs themselves didn't sound like absolute garbage, which they absolutely do. The production is tuned up to 11 in terms of busyness, and Mori decides that the songs are still not busy enough, so she decides to incorporate the worst flows ever into all these songs and makes herself the unneeded center of attention of all of them on songs, again, that already are blaring and blasting away at you. It is like a call for help in music form. It is not fun. Texts and two missed calls. Guess all of the friends that I pissed off. I'll talk. Oh. And it sounds like he's going to London. Sean's stuck in his... Number eight, AJR, The Maybe Man. This is by far the best AGR album, because there is actually a song on this album that I like. That's right. Unfortunately, the rest of the album is just incredibly depressing. And, and it's made worse by the fact that it's a group that only knows how to make shitty alternative pop hits. Uh, so almost every song is trying to complain about some larger issue, and it's very aware of the entire album that all it's doing is complaining, so it makes sure to address this before continuing to complain. And then it decides to play the most abysmal combinations of sound before continuing to complain, uh, and then finito, you have a new song from AJR. If that didn't sound fun to you, it was not fun for me either. When the good times are rolling on me, I got plenty in my pocket. You wish you were holding me, isn't it, isn't it something? Number seven, Lucas Graham Ford. That's right, Lucas Graham is back. It is real. Lucas Graham actually released an album this year. Yes, and it is the worst thing he has ever touched. Uh, these songs are so sugary, they are so awful, that they are guaranteed to give you a toothache and a headache that is even bigger than the toothache that it already gave you. This is by far the worst Lucas Graham album, and it is not even close. It's actually so funny um, how fucking bad this thing is. The hands on their knees, uh, make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees, uh, make the ghetto bitches put their hands on their knees. Yeah. I don't know how to dance, but can lean. It's something about a project, you gotta love her. I ain't never too good to fuck a bitch from the hood. You can bring me a bitch out the gutter. Yeah, probably wouldn't. Number six, all the baby's new EPs combined. That's right. The baby somehow released the worst music of his career this year, uh, even worse than last year. Oh my god. Wow. There was a point in time where he had a real genuine drive and charisma to him, um, but now he is so successful that he doesn't really need to try anymore, especially since he got pretty big doing the same thing over and over again, and good god, does he not try. Like, wow. Yeah, you can hear it through the music as clear as day he is not trying, so... It's nothing fun about it. I don't fall for tricks if they're ugly, I'm shallow, I guess. You'll be six feet deep from those hands, though. My friend fought demons over them, couldn't see much. Mike when I still joke around daily. And Adam and I don't talk all the time, but we're close enough. Number five, Wyatt James, fuck eating on the weekend. Uh, so putting this here does feel a little bit weird considering Wyatt is like a very small artist, much smaller than most of the people on this list. Um, and I'm no longer a tiny channel, so it's no longer punching up. Um, but, but many people openly requested that I heard this, um, online, and Wyatt himself said he's very open to criticism and wants everyone to check out his album, so here we go. Wyatt, talking to you directly, this album is horrible. That being said, that being said, it's horrible in a unique and interesting way. Even though I know the next album probably won't improve in any sort of regard, because I feel like you just sort of deflect criticism, I am going to be there listening out of pure curiosity. And that is not something I could say out of anyone else in the top five uh, worst albums this year. You try your absolute hardest with this music, and even though it, to me, is completely unlistenable and unlikable, the staggering amount of drive that you have is infectious. So please... Keep it up. All right. Blind side, couldn't see it in the slightest. That path you walked was the same as mine. 
Number four, Dream to whoever wants to hear. Yep, here it is. New Dream EP. And guess what? It's not just bad. Uh, it's offensively bad with how inoffensive it is. Uh, before it actually is offensive on the last song. Dream is a bury your head in the sand kind of guy. Uh, and he goes fully into this album uh, with that mentality as instead of trying to make something exceptional, he creates this half-assed trash basically saying, uh, hey, to whoever wants to hear this half-baked crap, here you go. Uh, it's boring, plain, lifeless, and most of the time, really, really cringe. They're screaming that they hate America and we're the reason. If you don't feel safe, then stop the funding the police. Welcome to America, where everything is made in China. Where a girl can have a penis and the boys can have vaginas. Number three, Tom McDonald, Adam Calhoun, The Brave Two. You heard the music in the intro. I don't need to say anything more. It's not even funny bad. It's not even worth checking out ironically. Just Number two, Melanie Martinez with Portals. All the stuff I heard about Melanie this year pushed aside. I want to just talk about the music on Portals and uh, why it feels like awful plastic rap uh, created boardroom trash. Uh, Melanie strips back her previous image to do something completely new here, uh, but I feel like the toxic baggage of her life extrudes through the music in a really uncomfortable way especially on the song that's like uh, allegedly about oliver tree and i i just feel like there's a lot of things on this album where real life events are sort of spun and turned into things in this fantasy world in a way that just feels really sour and just bad not to mention the sound is really cheap and cheesy throughout this album and the songs with sound effects literally live in my nightmares they are so incredibly unlistenable i think the experience of this album uh provides disappointment uh, disappointment that you didn't spend your time doing something else with your life it really is that bad number one here we go Fake type, fake swing too. Many of you probably have no idea what this is, and you just heard Japanese music, and you go, ha ha, lol, Japanese garbage, insert racism here. Look, this being Japanese is possibly the only saving grace of this album, because the lyrics that are in English are actually so incredibly embarrassing that you'll be very happy you don't understand what else is happening in this album. The problem with this album, though, runs so much deeper than just the lyrics. Um, I do not like how this album sounds. No, no, no. Uh, it sounds like the true embodiment of the phrase clown music. It is by far the busiest, loudest, and most obnoxious album the entire year. Uh, it feels like it is allergic to subtlety. It is afraid of breathing room. It doesn't trust the audience without jangling a pair of keys in front of them. Um, oh, and of course, how could I forget? Uh, it's, <laughs> it's an electro swing album. Front to back. Also, it has a Demon Dice feature. Also, also, the song with Demon Dice is not even close to the worst song on this album. It is one of the shortest albums on this list, funny enough, um, but within 30 seconds, you will absolutely hear everything the entire rest of this album has to offer, without, of course, including these things that basically every song includes, loud and annoying swing, uh, insanely quirky vocals, trap switches, trap switches, you know, um, and then... Of course, if you're lucky, which you usually are with this album, uh, there will be a key change at the very tail end, um, which you will find to be certainly something. Now, now while listening to this album, um, I felt like I was going insane. It, it really does feel like you're listening to the same song over and over again, and it's like you're constantly seeing the same image, and you start to judge whether or not you're actually awake listening to music, um, there is truly something about this album that feels uh, insanity-inducing. And that is why it is number one. Because no other album on this list really feels as torturous as this one. Um, and that's, that's about it. 
Thank you, everyone, for watching. Make sure you watch the best albums, you know, because I don't just hate everything, okay? I do like some stuff, all right? Kind of. All right, get me the fuck out of here.